Thanks. It's good to see you. All right, all right, all right. Good Abend. Good Abend. And we're all good Lutherans, and we sit towards the back. You're way out there. I see. How nice of you. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, Dennis, was the, um, the tailgating at least good? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I ran into Amy. Uh, I was running through the store picking up a few things she said what she was doing. And, yeah, I, I, well, I was, for a variety of reasons, I was not going to pay Peacock to watch Iowa, which was, I listened, which was fine. Uh, and so I thought, oh, I'll watch Iowa State. Huh. Not a whole lot better. And then I was like, okay, well, hopefully they had a good time tailgating. Yes. Hmm. So what's, what is, the, what is the, the, the favorite tailgating uh, uh, nosh? This, this, so, so do you guys, or are you with a group that does, or are you around folks that normally will do their thing? Okay. Any favorites amongst what they do? Uh huh. Those travel well. Easy to do beforehand. Okay, they're they're not the get there and grill for seven hours or do the okay. Oh yeah. I I there were when I first moved. I was in uh, Iowa City a couple of times working games uh, uh, with the uh, Calamus Lions. And, yeah, you know, parking and walking there, and you're like, holy buckets of cheese. I just, that's, I don't have that gift. Thank you, no. <laughs> I don't have the gift or the patience. Ah, good evening. good evening. All right, I don't know about you, it still feels like it's 8 o'clock, right? It's so dark. Uh, I know it's nice to actually have the sun still at this moment coming up a little bit uh, uh, when I wake up, but yeah, man, it's so dark at night. But here we are. Uh, Assembling, we're still in the midst of the season after Pentecost, but we're moving into, uh, that's not a liturgical season, but we do like to recognize the fact, fact that it is Thanksgiving. So we add a little different color. Uh, we got another two weeks back in the green, uh, and then it will be one in the white, and then we hit the blue. That's my favorite. I love the blue. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that we are not old school we, we, and don't do the purple in the, with the pink candle. I like the blue. It's so appropriate for December when it's this dark out. The blue is just nice and cozy. Ah, but in the midst of all kinds of things, um, with plays and switching of sports seasons and concerts, etc., oh my, it is good that we take a moment to stop and breathe and sit with each other and with God uh, and pray for our world and ourselves. Uh, and each other. And so before we start, because there's all kinds of other things going on, what's the first thing that we do? We breathe. So I'll invite you to get comfy. Maybe you want to put your feet on the floor, kind of get yourself settled out, and we're going to breathe deeply. It kind of slows us down. I'm going to invite you, as you breathe, 
to, we'll breathe in, we breathe in through the nose, and remember we'll fill up here, right? And then we'll go out through the mouth, and as we do, we exhale all of that stuff, the things that you got to do, the homework, the stuff at work you didn't finish, whatever it is, we just blow it out. You can pick it up later, but for now we're going to blow it out. And then as we breathe in, we breathe in that life-giving breath of the Holy Spirit. So we'll do that three times. And then we'll begin with responsive prayer. So we breathe in. Hold. And out. Hold. We breathe in. That life giving breath of the Holy Spirit. Hold. And out. Hold. One more time, we breathe in. Hold. And out. Hold. And we begin. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue with the dialogue. Show us your mercy, O God. Give us the joy of your saving help again. Give peace in all the world. Keep the nations under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy be forgotten. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Lord, hear my prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, we give you thanks for this opportunity to gather together, to pause in the midst of our week and breathe. We pray for your world. We give thanks for the changing of seasons for the harvest that has come in that will feed us over the winter. We give thanks for warm afternoon sun, blue skies. We give thanks for the beauty that is in front of us in this season. We pray for your world. We pray for peace where there is war, Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza. We pray for peace where there is conflict, conflict in our nation, in our state, in our communities, and in our homes. Bring your peace to 
to those places. And may we be instruments of that peace, a way that your peace enters in. We pray for healing for those in our lives who are in need of it. Who even now we see their faces in our minds. Heal them in body and spirit. Grant them whatever it is that they need. And now, O God, we pray that your spirit would stir in us in this place. Move through us. That together we might hear what you are calling us to do and be. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we continue with Matthew. Uh, Matthew 25, the first part of it. We'll get to the next part of it later. Um, so we are coming off of All Saints Sunday. You came through our arch of uh, that reminder that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. We are moving quickly to uh, Christ the King Sunday, which is the last Sunday of the church here. we got a little bit more to go. And so we have this kind of uh, odd little story uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, the first part of the 25th chapter. I'm pretty convinced that this is talking about something specific to the community that Matthew is writing to. Remember, we talk about, particularly with Gospels, we can kind of read it on three different levels. The first level is just the level of the story, right? We're in the story, and that's where we are seeing it. The second is, we can understand, hey, this is something that's written to a particular community that has its own stuff going on, right? Um, and so we can kind of hear it, understanding that, well, this may be speaking to something specific going on in that community. And we can also read it as, hey, here we are in 2023 uh, on a Wednesday night in November. Uh, and, you know, what does this have to say to us? I think this is one of those where we really kind of can hear it with the ears of somebody uh, who is in that community that Matthew is writing to. So listen, and then let's see what we can discern from it. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, five of them were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And then all these bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise said, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I, did, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. David, my man, you got a question. What is it? Mm hmm. Be kind and grateful. Okay. Okay. Yeah, share your oil. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, oh yeah, there, often that's one of the things that folks point to is, well, why didn't the wise share with the foolish? Yeah, what do you hear? Treat people how you want to be treated? Yeah.
Okay. All right. Sure. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Right. Preparation. And the Boy Scout motto, right? Girl Scouts too, I'm sure, right? Be prepared. Yeah. Yeah, what else? And questions you have or things you see. It's a bit of an odd story. Yes. Right. Okay. So, no, it's a great question. Why is the bridegroom so late? So, what's being talked about here is the bridegroom. This is one of those where I'm pretty convinced you read it as, as speaking specifically to that community. The bridegroom is that language in the church at that moment is referring to Jesus. But it's the resurrected and ascended Jesus. But you go, well, wait a minute. In the gospel, he hasn't, that hasn't happened yet. Right. Remember, this is why I think it's, it's a story that's being told for the community that it's being spoken to. And, well, if you read Mark, Jesus and Mark says, hey, there are folks here who will not die before I come again, right? They're expecting Jesus to come back and that right soon. Well, Matthew is written um, probably another generation later. And folks are going, well, where's the bridegroom? Why has Jesus not come again? And so I think this is being written to that community. So if, if that's the case, do they answer the question? Why is the bridegroom so late? Does it answer the question? What do you think? Because this is a great question. Why the heck is the bridegroom so late? Does it, does it, can you figure out in there, do they answer the question of why the bridegroom is late? He was delayed. But it doesn't say why, right? But we know he's delayed. So what's the point of the story? Be prepared? Yeah. Now there are others. Uh, there are others where it is a little closer to uh, Jesus is come and look busy, um, right? Uh, uh, this isn't even so much that because both of them fall asleep, right? Have you ever done that? You, you've been trying to stay up. You want to watch that 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 TV show. It's not so bad for you guys anymore. Because a lot of times you can record things or it's already recorded and you're just going out to watch it. But how many of us remember when you had to stay up, right? The final episode of MASH, right? I begged my parents, all right, this will sound a little odd. I begged my parents to watch The Day After. Do you remember that movie? That series? Oh, yeah, go, go Google that one. And, 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 you know, you're trying to, holy cow, stay awake. Or even last night, I was pretty wiped out. I was trying to stay awake until my wife came to bed. But, right? I didn't even hear her get in. So, you know, you're trying, but you fall asleep. And even those who are wise fall asleep. Now, isn't that interesting? So it's not about them falling asleep. It's not about them not keeping awake and, and, and keeping watch. Although it kind of ends that place, because neither of them did that. But there is something about being prepared in some way, and being prepared also for the fact that, well, this may take a while. Yeah. Yeah, in Matthew... There, there is, we've seen this, right? We've, we've heard about the wailing and gnashing of teeth. We've seen an edge. In Matthew, there is an edge 
to this. There is a sense that, well, if you're not attentive to this, okay. There's, there's a lake of fire and there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. That there is, that it, at the very least, there is some kind of consequence to this. So part of the question then becomes, all right, how do we read this in the larger text? But it's certainly, it, yeah, Matthew has that present. It grates a little on us, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, the door's shut up. Right? Right? Well, but, but again, remember, this is very specific to Jesus coming again. Now, you know, the other part of that as you think about it is, well, you know, for those who have sacrificed much. <laughs> uh, all right, we kind of... Yeah, man, there's got, what's the reward for this? <laughs> is there consequence? We're not. Because then if, if there isn't, then what's the, why bother doing this at all? Right? I mean, it's kind of like last week uh, uh, in, in, you know, there, there, were, there were these moments uh, as a kid, and I, I distinctly remember it, my colleague and I were talking about this, where you're sitting there going, well, shoot, if he's all forgiving, I can just live any doggone way, that, way I please, and then he'll forgive me, right? This goes back to Paul, right? Paul says, okay, should we just keep sinning so that grace abounds? By no means, he says. Or as somebody put it to me, but yeah, if you really believe in that, why are, you, why are you behaving that way anyway? Right? Yeah, there's, there's some tension here. There's, there's some things to ponder. You're thinking. What are you thinking? In terms of what? Mm hmm. Ah. <clears throat> in terms of the, uh, what they're talking about in terms of the end times, yeah, that would include the resurrection. Now, it's not talked about in those terms here, right? But, but in its entirety, uh, the the end times uh, would include it's it's when Jesus comes again because that is when there will be the new heaven and the new earth when when the reign of God comes in its entirety. Let me rephrase: when the reign of God comes and is complete. How many of you have ever had a, a school project where you have to work? pretty much the whole term on. You ever had one of those, right? Oh, boy. We had one on North Carolina. That was the only time I ever got a C. And I deserved it, too, because I didn't work on it. But all semester, right, or all term, whatever the term is for you guys, you're working a little bit, right, and a little bit, and a little bit, and a little bit. You ever get to that point where you're like, ah, oh, it's almost done? You ever been to that point? What was your project? Okay. So a science project? Yeah. Yeah. What was your project? Okay. Okay. Yeah, but, but you're sitting here, and at some point, for most of them, like for a project or something, it's, it's together enough where you can kind of see the end point, but you're not there yet, right? Okay. Okay. 
Right, so, so that's, that's where we in the church are at this moment. We live in what we talk about as the already but not yet. The story's written, but it's not, it's not complete, right? The project is, is, is really done, but it's not complete, right? We've got this, we're, we're right there, man, but it's not complete. And so, in the end times, that is when Jesus comes again in the reign of God, which we already live in, right? We enter through the waters of baptism. We already live in this, in this reign, but it's not complete yet. It's not fully assembled yet, right? It's not fully here yet. We live in the already but not yet. This requires the imagination we were talking about last week, right? This idea that two, that these, these realities layer over top one another. Can we imagine that? And if we imagine that we live in the, in, in the already of the reign of God, well, not only will we have our lives full, we'll have extra. And maybe we will be more gracious than, uh, than the otherwise, right? Or maybe there is something in this parable about the oil and what the oil is that just can't be shared. Maybe I can bear witness to it, but I can't share it. It's not something I can... I don't know. I mean, you could play with that a little bit. But can we imagine? Can we imagine what that reign of God is like? And can we imagine that we live in it already now? And that goes back to the conversation we were having last week, right? Um, I, my last Saturday was... Uh, it was an interesting day. It was a full day. I started with a funeral uh, down in uh, Iowa City at Gloria Day. Annie Larson, um, who I knew, she followed me in the front office at Gloria Day. And that's part of the reason I went. And part of the reason I went was because of that community. In the last 10 years, three of their staff have, while serving been diagnosed with serious illnesses, and all three of them have had to take disability and have died within a year after leaving. So that community, bless their hearts, they know how to care for a seriously ill staff member. And so part of it was support for them and support for my colleagues who, who are leading that while grieving. Um, I also found that I needed that worship service and I didn't know I needed that worship service, so that was good. After that, I went to uh, a, a meeting of some colleagues with Diana Butler Bass. Uh, some of you may have heard her name before. She's a Christian author and historian. Had done a workshop at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection and then she did a brown bag lunch with uh, some of the uh, uh, clergy types, church worker types, after. And... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm working my way around how this fits uh, and using our imagination. She shared that uh, she's got a daughter who's in her like mid to late 20s. And her daughter had asked her in relationship to Israel and Gaza, Hey mom, whose side are you on? And I love her response. She said, I'm on the side of not killing people who go to concerts. I'm on the side of not killing people at the breakfast tables. I'm on the side of not bombing civilians. I'm on the side of uh, not cutting off uh, basic supplies and uh, for hospitals and water and food. I'm paraphrasing, but that's in essence what she said. And her daughter, she said, thought for a moment and said, yeah, I'm on that side too. See, we follow a Jesus in the reign of God. The choice is, I, I, think she, I think she reflected Christ. Because what does Jesus always do in these parables? He kind of cuts through the Gordian knot. He, 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 he just, uh, what's the Adam Savage quote? I reject your reality and substitute my own. He rejects our reality. 
a reality that says you're either on this side or this side, right? You got to pick one. And Jesus cuts right through that and says, yeah, no. I'm on the side of, we just don't hurt people in those ways. Can we imagine that? Can we imagine just not hurting people in those ways? Or even just not hurting people by calling them names? By assuming things about them because of how they dress or how they look? Can we just, right? Can we live that way? Can we imagine that we can live that way because we already live in the reign of God and that's just the way we are in the reign of God, right? How does that feel? In your gut, to think about that. How does that feel? Does it feel good? Does it feel scary? Does it feel... Impossible? What? How does it feel to imagine living that way? Sure. Yeah. Uh, hey, if we can't be honest here, where else can we be honest? Because it's being honest about who we are, right? Ain't none of us perfect in here. Not even me. Not by a long shot. It's a little scary, isn't it? A little intimidating. What would it be like to present that? To live and lean into that? Particularly in our current climate. Right. And I get the self-preservation and just the, oh, my Lord Moses... Do I even want to? I get it. But what if we all lived into that imagination that Jesus has laid before us? That we live already in the reign of God. It's here now already. And we're in it. And we just lived that way. What if we all did that? If we all just said, yeah, we're going to do that then eventually what happens to out there? If all those who say they are followers of Jesus just live that way. Understanding we will fall short, because, well, we're human still yet, but, it, right? But it's hard. I, I posted, um, I listened a few days ago to a very good podcast by the New York Times. It was labeled 1948, and in the midst of everything else, I skipped over it because I'm like, what is this? And then it occurred to me what they meant. Because 1948, 47, 48, is right around the creation of the state of Israel. So I listened to it. Um, and based on my own study, I had a friend who uh, in the mid-90s was in Ramallah on the West Bank teaching English to Palestinian children. It was the tail end of the first intifada. And I was in seminary, and we exchanged letters. And what she shared about her experience of what was happening was a different viewpoint than what I had before. So I spent some time, uh, and uh, amidst all of those resources, seminary, I spent some time examining that. And what I heard in that podcast was a wonderful articulation of, in a short period of time, a wonderful articulation of the complexity and also a wonderful lens the lens this author takes. He's a New York Times reporter, also wrote a, best, uh, a bestseller about nonfiction, about the kind of the roots of the causes, and he talks about it in terms of stories. I posted that on my Facebook feed. I thought about that. Even though I think it's a great resource, does it fully cover it? No, it's never going to fully cover. And can I anticipate the responses that I'm going to get from folks who are deeply immersed in those narratives? Absolutely. 
Might there be a little bit of cost to me? Maybe. It was a little intimidating thinking about what might be the response. But on the other hand, okay, I think this is a helpful voice to hear. I'll throw it out there. Because part of what it does is it, it just lays two realities, two very harsh realities side by side. It doesn't try to, because I, I don't know that you can solve it. It's just acknowledging it. Here are these two hard things. And I think the only way, the only way that gets solved is if you cut that Gordian knot. Whose side are you on? Oh, I'm on the side of just not doing those awful things to people. Period. And then the hard work begins, right? Because, okay, what then does, how does, but what happens if we all start there? What happens is the bridegroom shows up and, and the party's already started, right? Because what they're waiting for is the party. And they fall asleep and the party's are oh, he's, he's already come. The party's already started. So what we're waiting for is a party. Right? So why not get the party? Who doesn't want to start the party early, right? Let's start the party early. It may not get rocking until Jesus comes, but, right? We can get the party started. Warm up the band a little bit. Mix the punch. Make some really good uh, dip, right? We can do that. Things to ponder. And I ask for your prayers, because I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure where I'm going this weekend. So if you have insights, you let me know. And if you're curious, show up. We've got baptisms at both services. So uh, that's the other thing is you get to, if, if you show up on Sunday or watch the service, you get to see, okay, how do I take this text and work baptisms into it too? So if any of you want to take the pulpit this weekend, you just let me know. I'd be more than happy to have you join. All right, friends. I don't know about you, but I'm getting hungry. You hungry? Yes. This is a taste of that party to come, this meal. That's what communion is. It's a foretaste of that party that will happen when the bridegroom comes. And we are so thankful that we are able to be around the table, not just with those in this room, but remember, we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, right? I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on the night in which he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread. I invite you all to come forward. Uh, if you just make one big long line at the front, put your toes on the, uh, st on the step, and I will invite you to start the end of the line here, which means we're probably going to need to go that way a little bit. Man, we're almost too big to all fit, but I think we can all fit. I think we can. I think we can. Hey, Jake, can I borrow you again?
promise not to do this every week. Well, you know. All right. Red is wine. White is grape juice. And bread is bread. The body of Christ given for you. 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 to stand. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we've done wrong and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Ready? Let us bless the Lord. Oh, I love that. I heard it. Almighty God, bless us. Defend us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Uh, let's see what's going on. We've got mac and cheese and hot dogs tonight. Uh, and so next week I will have a question for you all about worship during thanks on the week of Thanksgiving, but we'll cover that next week. Uh, poinsettias. Uh, if you would like to have a poinsettia to help decorate for the Christmas time, the sign-up sheet is out there. We do ask that you pay in advance. Uh, there should be an envelope with that. Uh, let's see. Uh, if you play an instrument, that includes some of uh, the youth. If you're interested, um, we are getting a band. Somebody in here is already playing in the band, right? You can talk to that young man right there. No? Oh, bummer. But he wanted to. He was on the cusp. It's probably a timing thing. Um, so uh, we're having that coming up. That'll be Christmas Eve. Uh, and then we also are just parents, just so you know, if you have uh, faith formation kids, uh, we're actually going to have them presenting part of what we're collecting all during Advent. That'll happen on, in the morning of the 24th. Uh, we have one service at 9 because that day is actually Advent 4 in the morning. And then it's Christmas Eve in the evening. That's going to be fun, but then I'm a liturgical nerd. Um, other than that, a new members class after church this Sunday uh, uh, after the second service. And yes, please keep both those families with their uh, baptismal folks uh, in your prayers this week. All right, friends, as you go off to your other things, go in peace, serve the Lord. All right, get up on out of here.